So do you keep review causes? People now see my screen who are online. Yes. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so that was the issue. I will replay now um, this video. Please let me know quite quickly if you're online and you can't see or hear. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon. I am presenting this from the United States, so it is very early morning for my time from Boston. My name is Elizabeth Lewandowski. I am from the Department of Pathology, Division of Clinical Laboratories and Molecular Medicine at the, the Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. And I am also the Research Director at the Invisible International. Dr. Kent Lewandowski is my co-researcher on this published study. He will join me later on the Q&A session. The title of today's presentation is Measurement of High Sensitivity Troponin T in Patient with Early Stage Lyme Disease, Possible Evidence for Subclinical Cardiac Involvement. Objectives. One, review current understanding of cardiac involvement in early Lyme disease. Two, describe measurement of high sensitivity troponin T in early Lyme disease. Three, review causes for an elevated high sensitivity troponin T in the absence of acute coronary syndrome. Statement of conflict. All authors have no conflict of interest to declare. This slide shows the clinical features of Lyme disease from CDC. Lyme disease presenting syndromes, symptoms vary and overlap with other disorders. The classic EM rash is not always present. Cardiac involvement occurs in 1% of the cases. This chart shows the relative frequency of clinical features among confirmed cases in the United States from 2008 to 2017. 2% 2 has meningitis, 71% has EM rash, 4% has a neuropathy, 9% has facial palsy, 1% has carditis, and 28% has arthritis. Cardiac involvement in Lyme disease can take many forms. AV nodule block, most commonly seen, myocarditis, pericarditis, endocarditis, cardiomyopathy. And this photo shows the spiral key is embedded in myocardium. The slice is the picture is from a CDC. Clinical utility of a troponin blood testing. Troponin I and the T leak from a damaged myocytes following cardiac injury. Troponin testing is mostly commonly used to evaluate the patients with acute coronary syndromes. Historically, there have been case reports of elevated troponin levels in patients with Lyme disease using older, less sensitive troponin assets. The new high sensitivity troponin T can detect the troponin at much lower levels than earlier troponin assets. What is a normal HSTNT? Current consensus is to report the 99th percentile of a normal reference population. Therefore, 1% of normal subjects 
will exceed this level. In 2022, we published a study in the Annals Clinical and the Laboratory Science. The study abstracts are as follow. Background. In patients with early Lyme disease, cardiac involvement is known to occur in approximately 1% of patients, according to the CDC. Study methods. We measure the high sensitivity troponin T in 42 patients with well-characterized early Lyme disease to evaluate the possibility of a subclinical cardiac involvement. Study results, five out of 42, which is 11.9% of patients, exhibited high sensitivity troponin T values above the gender-specific 99th percentile cut off for a normal HSTNT. For discussion purpose, I rounded off to 12%. One patient had a value greater than the cutoff used for acute myocardial infection of 69.32 nanograms deciliter. The acute myocardial infection cutoff is greater than 52 nanograms per liter. At the Massachusetts General Hospital, we flag high sensitivity troponin T value for a female greater than 10 nanograms per liter, for a male greater than 15 nanograms per liter. So we had another case. It has high, high sensitivity troponin T of a 22.9 nanogram per liter. What does all this mean? Based on the 99th percentile upper normal range, we would expect 1% of healthy subjects to have a result above this range. However, in this study, 12% had values above upper normal range of the 99th percent tile, and the one subject was above the cutoff of acute myocardial infarction. There are many causes for an elevated troponin T in the absence of an acute coronary event, including systemic inflammation. Other organ systems may also be involved in early Lyme disease. In 1996, a study was published that 40% of early Lyme disease has a abnormal liver function test. Therefore, it is not surprising to see the heart as an organ is involved in the early Lyme disease. Examples of conditions in which troponin T may be elevated acute coronary syndrome, myocarditis, heart failure, chronic kidney disease, acute major illness, systemic inflammatory disorders, left ventricular hypertrophy, etc. In conclusion and a recap, today's presentation. Elevated level of high sensitivity troponin T are observed in 12% of the patients with early Lyme disease in our study. There are many possible explanations for increased high sensitivity to T values in different types of patients in the absence of acute cardiac damage. One explanation for our findings is that an acute systemic inflammatory response may result in increased HSTNT. Nonetheless, our results raise the possibility that the subclinical cardiac involvement may be more common in early Lyme disease than previously recognized. 
The limitation of our study are follow. No ECG were performed. No post-treatment samples were tested. Hence, further studies will be necessary to elucidate the significance of this finding. Thanks for attending my presentation. Thank you very much. We have a, a short time for one or two questions in the audience now from Zoom. Let me just find it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any information on proportion who test positive or negative with troponin T in patients with lung carditis diagnosed clinically? Do you hear me, Elizabeth? Yes, there is Kent Nojowski here. Um, there isn't uh, very much data on that. Uh, most patients with Lyme carditis present with AB nodal block and these other forms of cardiac involvement are less common. But no, there's very little troponin data uh, on Lyme disease. Uh, and this is the only troponin high sensitivity data. So it's an observation that we have here. A lot more research is gonna be necessary to tease out what this means. Uh, but at the moment, it's new data, preliminary evidence. Uh, so we don't wanna make more out of it than is there. But in most patients with carditis, it's just AV nodal block, which doesn't cause an elevated troponin. Uh, another question. Uh, this uh, results, do they have any consequence with treatment? And in particular, uh, risk or other risk of a heart uh, Alzheimer reaction? Again, this is something that awaits further study. These were banked samples, so it was long after the fact that the patient had and was treated with Lyme disease. So we don't know the significance of the findings, but it is a finding that uh, suggests that troponin elevations are more common in Lyme disease than was previously suspected. And this is wouldn't have been revealed necessarily with the old generation troponin assays. So again, we don't want to make more out of the findings than are there, but we can't ignore them either. But really what's needed is a follow-up study that includes troponin measurements in varying stages of Lyme disease, as well as follow-up post-treatment samples to show that the troponin goes down to baseline, as well as electrocardiogram and potentially echocardiography. That's what's really needed. So that's why we say this is preliminary evidence. And again, don't make more out of it than it shows, but it certainly raises the question that this should be looked into further. Okay, now, I think from the clinical uh, uh, clinicians, this could be one piece of uh, uh, information, that, I mean, one piece of uh, reference, in a sense, for clinicians taking care of uh, early Lyme disease patients, they could use this as a, you know, a supportive evidence that they might want to look into when they uh, um, diagnosis and taking care of patients. Uh, what about a very short question and a short answer? Okay. Did you study this with young males who had the COVID vaccine? Uh, Did this marker increase? Robert Johnson asking, uh, is there the same data with young males vaccinated against COVID? Would you repeat it? I couldn't hear it. You had the same kind of results for young men vaccinated uh, uh, against COVID. Oh, I uh, yes, now I understand what you're saying. Yes, that the COVID vaccine caused a certain percentage of cardiac involvement. Uh, I don't know that that's, you know, the same mechanism here. That's, you know, I won't be total conjecture to try to, you know, relate the two. I just think our presentation here shows that there may be something there. It may be significant, but it needs further investigation with more detail than we were able to provide in this study. But my th my thoughts on that is if if it's due to systemic inflammation, if the COVID vaccine caused some kind of inflammation response, so it's potentially you could have elevated troponin T. It would be very, very interesting if somebody has a bank of the samples could do could do the study. 
Yes, thank you. I, I know that some physicians, especially in Luxembourg, found my levels of D dimers among vaccinated people. Okay, thank you very much. And then we'll move to the next presentation by uh, Tanya Miyatovic. She is uh, from the Red uh, Lab uh, Laboratory making some uh, diagnostic tests, especially on phages. And she will speak about what we learned from testing ticks.